A few weeks ago, we made a video on how to install the new Micro Swiss CR6 SE all metal hot end into your CR6 SE printer. And in that video, I mentioned that whenever I do these upgrade videos, I get quite a few questions on now, how do I update the firmware to allow me to print at these higher temps? A lot of times the 3D printers, especially the Crowdy, but this is for a lot of them, they'll actually limit how hot you can take the hot end in the firmware. And that makes a lot of sense because the default non all metal hot ends that come with a lot of these budget printers will destroy themselves if you go above a certain temperature. And so now that we've got an all metal hot end, we need to increase that temperature to allow us to print with some of these higher temp materials. And my normal response in the past has been, well, these micro Swiss hot ends are compatible with so many different 3D printers that all have their own main boards, all have their own different versions of Marlin, that it is quite difficult or not impossible to make a guide covering many different ones. It would require so many different videos. However, in the case of the CR6 SE and SE Max, Crowley went with a completely different hot end style. So it is much easier and makes a lot more sense for me to make a guide on how to do so for these printers. So in today's video, we are going to be going step by step on how to upgrade your CR6 SE from the stock firmware it comes with to the much better community firmware that exists out there. And although the main thing that prompted me to make this video was me wanting to increase the max temp that my CR6 SE can hit. This video is by no means just for people that are wanting to upgrade or have upgraded to an all metal hot end. And even if you have a completely stock CR6 SE or SE Max, the community firmware, much like the Gyres firmware we covered a couple of months ago for the Ender 3 V2, will really give you a ton of new features and overhaul the entire touchscreen, bringing your Marlin up to a much later date. And again, just giving you a massive amount of new features. So again, although we are doing this for the sake of the all metal hot end and increasing the temperature, this guide is going to be for everybody that wants to upgrade their CR6 SE to this fantastic community firmware. With that being said, I am really excited to update the CR6 SE so I can print with some of these higher temp materials that I want to test out on this all metal hot end, as well as check out some of the really cool features that come along with the community firmware. So without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Huge thank you to MicroSwiss for sponsoring today's video. MicroSwiss manufactures hot ends, extruders, and nozzles for over 30 different 3D printer models and is constantly expanding. I've been running their upgrades on a wide range of Creality printers for over a year now, and I've printed everything from standard PLA to carbon fiber nylon with them. I love that they're a US-based company and that all their products are machined in-house. This helps them to maintain the extremely high level of quality that their customers have grown to expect. Another huge perk is that their upgrades are made for specific machines, making them drop-in replacements in most instances. This helps to expedite the upgrade process and allows you to get up and running again very quickly. Links will be in the description to find out more about the various upgrades they offer or to pick up your own. So really the key thing that I wanted to do was raise the max temp from the 260 that it's at by default to a higher temp, somewhere closer to 300 Celsius because we've now got this all metal hot end. And you could use the standard uh, CR6 SE firmware and just modify it, but we're going to be using the community firmware because it is a much more up-to-date version of the Marlin firmware. And not only that, but it gives us a large, massive amount of additional features that can be accessed from the touchscreen. There's a big old list here, which I can uh, link you guys to in the description, but it is it is quite a lot. And the ability to PID tune directly from the touchscreen is also massive, especially because we're going to be printing with a wider range of materials with this all metal hot end. And lastly, before we jump into this, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of the team Team and contributors behind making this community firmware possible. You guys absolutely rock. The first thing we're going to have to do is figure out what motherboard version is inside of our CR6 SE. And there is a list of different things you can do here to try to determine which motherboard version you have. Personally, I think it's easiest just to pop open the printer. It's just a few screws and then you can know for certain what motherboard version is inside of your printer. To do so, we're going to need to remove two screws on the top of the printer. The first one you can access by just pushing the print bed all the way back. Then for the second one, you'll want to push the bed all the way forward and that will give you enough clearance so that way you can access the longer screw on the back top. 
Next, there's going to be three screws on the bottom that you'll have to remove. I found it easiest to sort of just angle it against something. Be careful not to lean all the pressure on the, uh, or the weight of the printer on the power cable. Again, if, I, if you lean it up against something, then it will take a lot of that strain off of the power cable. And then again, just the three screws on the bottom here will need to be removed as well. Be careful because there is a fan attached to the housing. So I just went ahead and sat the housing on top of the printer. And just looking at the board here, I can see that I have the CR era version 1.1.0.3 board. Here's a photo of the other board types, the 4.5.3 and 4.5.2. It's also going to be displayed on the board, uh, but it is in a different location. Mine was on the center, while on these boards, the version is going to be off to the edge of the printer. And once you've got that, take a photo of it, write it down just so that way you know what version you have, and you can go ahead and close up the printer again. If your printer had the 4.5.2 motherboard, you'll download that version of the firmware and the 4.5.3, you'll download that appropriate version of the firmware. If you're like me and you have the newer version 1.1 era board, you're going to be using the 4.5.3 firmware. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll down to the assets section. This is where all the latest firmwares are. And if you have, again, the 4.5.2, as you can see listed there, you'll download that one. Ignore the no watchdog version for the sake of this tutorial. And then there's also the uh, 4.5.3 version, which is what I'm going to be needing. So I'm just going to go ahead and download that zip file. And once it's download, you're going to need to then uh, unzip that zip file. Once unzipped, this is what you will see. And then under the firmware folder, you will see two other folders, one for the motherboard and one for the touchscreen. We're gonna to start with the touchscreen because it's a little bit more involved. And so I think getting that out of the way first is best. And so we will just go ahead and unzip the touchscreen uh, zip file. And in there, you will find two folders, one that has the dwin underscore set uh, folder and one that has the CR6 kernel upgrade folder. And if you're following this guide, it's safe to assume you probably haven't ran the community firmware before. And so we're going to need to just take those three files under the kernel upgrade and drag them into the dwin set folder. So now they're all going to be within that folder. You will need a micro SD card to flash the firmware on the touchscreen, but I'm telling you right now, it's quite a finicky process. And this initial micro SD card did not work. I ended up having to grab a second one. So have a good quality micro SD card on hand. Um, inside of the touchscreen folder, there's actually a readme file or a text file. And if you open this up, it will kind of tell you the basics as far as what kind of micro SD card is needed or recommended. It's got to be under 16 gigabytes and it has to be the SDHC type and it needs to be formatted in FAT32. So there's definitely some requirements that initially I thought I could just grab a FAT32 micro SD card, throw this file on there and call it a day, but that did not work. So make sure you've got again a micro SD card that is within these parameters and then you're going to need to format the SD card. Um, um, again, I tried not doing this and it did not work. So these instructions are here for a reason. There's a specific guide for Windows, one for Linux and one for Mac, which is what I'm on. It is really, really easy to um, format using these instructions. I basically just opened up the command prompt. I figured out what uh, disk number had been assigned to the micro SD card. And then after that, I honestly just copied and pasted the two or three lines that were required to uh, unmount and then format the micro SD card. So again, depending on whether you're on Windows, Linux, or Mac, just follow the guide or the couple of steps that are outlined in that readme text file. Now that we've got a formatted micro SD card, we're gonna take that dwin set folder with the kernel upgrade files as well as the files that were in it, and we're going to drag that folder to that micro SD card, make sure everything is there, and then we can go ahead and eject that and remove the micro SD card. So that way we can head over to the printer and we're going to have to access the touch screen, which we'll do so by first removing it from the aluminum extrusion by taking out the two screws in the front. Then you will need to remove the cable that is attached to the back of the screen. That'll then allow us to flip the screen on its face and we will need to remove all of the four screws that hold this housing together. Once done, go ahead and just lift that off and it will show you or you'll have access to the micro SD card uh, port on this touchscreen, which is now where we are going to insert that micro SD card with the updated firmware on it. 
it's kind of a little bit tricky if you've got big fingers to position it, but make sure it clicks into place. Plug the screen back in. Just be careful not to short anything out since the back is exposed and turn the printer on. You should be greeted with a blue screen. It'll take a few minutes. Um, this is actually a screenshot of when I uh, had not formatted the SD card. So uh, this is incorrect. So it looks like it flashed correctly, but if you look at the uh, numbers on the far right side, they are all ending in zeros, and that is a one sign that it did not flash correctly. So once I reformatted the SD card and did it the way we outlined in this video, now you can see there are some with ones and threes and a six. Like that is how you know that it has formatted correctly. And it does state in the guide that flashing might take a couple of tries. It recommends doing it two or three times. And so I went ahead and did it three times just to be safe to do that. Literally just go ahead and flip the printer off flip it back on and let it run the same thing again, at least an additional two times to make sure that it uh, took all of the firmware to the screen. Now that we've got that done, take out that micro SD card and you are safe to go ahead and install the cover again on the back, plug that uh, touchscreen cable back in, and then we will go ahead and take those two screws and just mount it to the front of the printer and the firmware portion of this is, of the touchscreen is complete. So for the motherboard firmware, I really see it as you having three options. The first is to go under firmware, go under the motherboard firmware, and you could flash that bin file to your printer. That will give you the community firmware. It'll give you the PID tuning, all the great features. However, you're still gonna have that 260 Celsius hot end cap. Second is if you wanna compile your own firmware, the creator made an absolutely amazing step-by-step -step guide on how to do so, and I am myself very thankful for this. I haven't played with Marlin firmware directly in quite a while. Or the third option is I did compile firmware for both board types that has the increased hot end temperature. And so I went ahead and uploaded it to my drive. There's one version for the 4.5.2, one for the 4.5.3, which is also the V1.1, which you can download. That'll give you the latest 6.1 community firmware, but I've also, again, modified the max temp uh, in the firmware. So that way, if you've got an all metal hot end, you can print at higher temperatures. So I am going to be downloading the 4.5.3 firmware, and then you will need a full size SD card. I'm using the same micro SD card to SD adapter. I highly recommend deleting whatever is on the memory card. Just leave it blank and make sure it's formatted to FAT32. And then just drag that bin file, um, again, whether it's the all metal increased temp one or the standard one to the root of that SD card. Once you see that it's on there, go ahead and eject the SD card, plug it into your printer and turn the power on for your printer. It should take a second to load up. You can see here it says community edition and if everything went well, you should be greeted with this. And if you see it says CR6COM, it has the firmware and basically stating that it is ready to rock and roll. The first thing you wanna do is go under setup and restore the factory settings. When you do so, you'll see this little kind of text, scrolling text that I love, say that it has restored and please turn on and off your printer. And once we have done that, you'll likely want to automatically uh, run the bed leveling again, the mesh, as well as do the PID tuning. The highest you can do the PID tuning is going to be 280 Celsius, which in my opinion is perfectly fine. Um, although I increased the firmware to where you can essentially take it to 300 Celsius, I don't think I'd recommend doing that just for the longevity of your thermistor. I would say 290 is probably gonna be my own personal cap with most of my stuff running no higher than 280, but I did want the ability to run some polycarbonate testing. And as you can see here, it had no problem holding a stable 290 uh, Celsius. And so the last thing I did after the PID tune was just run the bed leveling and the Z offset. The new bed leveling with this new firmware touchscreen uh, interface is absolutely amazing because it shows you a step by step of just, you know, each point how deviated your bed is or is not. And it's just, it's going to be such a treat to use the CR6 SE with the all metal hot end, the increased temp and this community firmware. I am uh, beyond excited. It feels really like a brand new machine at this point. 
And uh, now that it's done, all that's left to do is print. So I went ahead and fired up a print. This is just with some ABS, but I'm printing it really hot at 260 Celsius because I'm doing some sort of experimentation. But you are ready to rock and roll and enjoy your updated CR6 SE. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that your CR6 SE is now updated to the community firmware, either with the higher temp variant for the all metal hot end or just the standard 6.1 version of the community firmware. I just grazed the surface of what the features are within this new UI, and I am super excited to play around a lot more with the CR6 SE. It feels like a completely new machine. If you do have any questions at all, don't be afraid to let me know in the comments down below. I did my best to sort of make this as step-by-step -step as possible based off my experience installing this, but if you have any questions, let me know and I will do my best to answer. Also, others have been absolutely amazing in past videos at responding to comments that I just aren't able to get to or have not seen and if there is something that I don't know the answer to the uh, one of the devs on the team for the community firmware has been really active and I have no problem reaching out to him to see if he can provide some additional feedback on that note don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos we make a video every single week so there's always fresh content coming your way and if you do want to support the channel furthermore I will place links down below in the description over to my patreon where there are some really awesome rewards Huge thank you to all my existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you guys allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this is Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.